and a wife. I took them to my mother's place and my father's place to reorganize my thoughts and reorganize myself. Okay. So thinking through, I decided I'm a specialist in sports. I'm a professional sportsman. I went to a public field alone in a taekwondo uniform, six, and started Pamoja Multiples Academy. Training by myself. Within a week, I had recruited 10 people. Okay. Fast forward, by when COVID was hitting us, we had 1,450 students in three counties. Wow. Very impressive. And Rena, how many uh, uh, trainers do you have in the institution? When uh, COVID was hitting us, mm -hmm. we had employed 14 youths. 14 youths. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one and madame who are over 35. There are say young people. The general manager who is the incoming, as we are transiting to International Academy, who is the, uh, going to be the technical director, he's only 28 years old. Oh, why? Mm. That is very, very impressive, I must say. So I'd like to find out from you, Ms. Mishere, and uh, just for someone who's watching this conversation and they're wondering, then why should the, like, institutions and even parents uh, just uh, get to be part of Pamuja Multisports Academy? Wow. <coughs> as um, as Pamoja Multisports uh, Company or uh, organization, we, we empower, we are out to empower our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from uh, looking out for our business side, we love to empower our parents. When you bring your parents, say for example, when you bring your child, uh, as much as I want to impress you like so that I can get your money into our <laughs> into our kitty and also our core okay. our core value is to make sure that we get we give you what we have promised okay. we, if we say that your child we see that your child has got this talent it is upon us to nurture it to the level that we feel that that child is capable of going and um, we feel that there is a there is a there, there is a lead at the moment which we are trying to break free, that we can get our children to fly. Yes, we are athletes; we run, but there are also so much, so much out there that children can can do. Uh, when you say you are a sports person, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the one doing it. You can be a coach. You can be a facilitator, you can mm -hmm. be a trainer. So there is a, a whole lot of employment within the sports industry, which we are trying to sensitize the society that is there. So yeah, if you are to bring your child or your, go, your, your company brings out your people, we promise you to give you exactly what we have promised, the very best, bring out the best out mm -hmm. of you. All right. Yeah. Back to you, Mr. Nesmus. Uh, when we started this conversation, you said follow your passion. Well, follow your passion, and the money will come. And from your story of venturing into so numerous businesses, and a uh, couple of them failing, and then back to recreational business, which so far so good, as by the story that you've told. Uh, what are a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way? Oh, one of the major financial lessons that I've learned is that not about how much money that comes in from investors or from banks in terms of loan to put in the business. It is about how do you use what you have now. The moment you have 20 shillings and you use 20 shillings and 50 cents, you'll get into debt. Okay. The moment you have 20 shillings and you use 19 shillings and 50 cents, you are good. Mm, mm. What if I'm watching this and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm intending to start a business, but I'm saving towards that business. Will there be enough amount of money when it comes to savings for me to start that particular business? Should I start with what I have? Um, you can never save enough to be able to start your dream business. What happens is that there is always a bigger business than the one you're starting. So the trick here is not to save so much money. It is to look who has the money and make him invest in your business. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? That is quite a heavy weight uh, tip there when it comes to financial aspect of it. So the upcoming community-based uh, programs, uh, school programs by the government. Mm -hmm. So do you guys intend to work with the government? 
Yes, we do. Um, actually, for the last so many years, before COVID, we were working with schools. Okay. And um, most of our students are basically directly from schools, partnering with schools. And now that they have, uh, they're opening up the community base, where there is a section for f physical fitness and wellness. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, we might, uh, we're looking either to work directly with the government or still partner with the, ch with the, with the schools that we've been working with, uh, which either way, we'll still be serving our children. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So whichever way that it, it goes, we'll just have to, to work with the government, whether through the, the schools or the government itself. Uh, any competition at Olympics coming up? Yes, that one I'll leave to Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we had Olympics sh uh, scheduled for this year um, in uh, July and unfortunately COVID um, made it uh, impossible for us to transit uh, mm. uh, I mean to go to Olympics. It has been postponed to next year mm. and uh, I'm very proud to say that w the only Olympian from Taekwondo who was qualified to go to Tokyo mm. 20. It's still Tokyo 2020, although okay. it will be held in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Faith Ogalo, I was her coach mm -hmm. in the All African Games in Rabat, and where she won silver and went after that, handed over to another coach, a very able coach, Elena Smarangu, who also c comes from the police force, and was able to propel her to the uh, Olympics through qualifiers which, which were held in Rabat last year and of course before we got this product there's a somebody who identified so I say big up to coach Jack uh, Oyogi Kibab University she comes from Kibab University Oh, it feels like whenever you speak, there is a lot of uh, uh, motivation from your previous uh, uh, li life of service. Has that influenced uh, your business world in any form? Yes, very much. And how you operate uh, that is? This business, as we are going forward since we started and where we are going, we are structuring it and following the military system. <laughs> What is the military system? <laughs> <laughs> the military system is a very organized and professional service with a lot of integrity. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. See how I see where the influence is coming from. Mm -hmm. Has come from the service and back to just being propelled to the business world of which is recreational business. Uh, coming to you, Ms. Mushera, mm -hmm. uh, uh, currently during this COVID 19 uh, and the restrictions of gathering, mm -hmm. how are you guys uh, uh, doing the trainings? Yeah. Um uh, it has uh, the COVID-19 uh, got us thinking mm -hmm. because now we, we of course like everybody else went into a halt mm -hmm. but uh, we are quite grateful because we managed to get ourselves into a place where we have uh, a lot of land uh, and it's an open uh, nature place mm -hmm. it's uh, I think it's uh, about 10, 10 acres ten. Yes, and so we have, uh, if we are going to um, do se sessions, we only take up to 15 people okay. according to the stipulated guidelines. And because we have that land which is very vast, it's open land, uh, very, very natural with trees actually. Where is it located? It's located in Kiambu, Kiambu uh, in a place called Idyllic House, Misley House. Uh, so that one came as a blessing so that we are able to continue with our, with our operations, with our sessions, without uh, breaking any, any rules or without endangering anybody's life. And people actually love it there because, you know, the gym is all, like now we feel like the gym is all sweaty and, you know, we used to love it there. And now this outdoor is all free and, uh, and fresh and people love it there better. Thought of uh, virtual training, is that possible? With it? Yes, we've been, we've been, we, we've been, we've not gone into it very much, but we are going towards that direction now, where we do the, the virtual training, which mm -hmm. is live stream or recorded, mm -hmm. and either way, like he said, whatever you want, we'll deliver it to your doorstep, whether through live stream or. Yeah, outsourcing. Like the way Mr. Nesmus is very confident. Yes, he's very, he's, <laughs> he's the driving force. 
When it comes to uh, the youth in Kenya, the unemployment rate continues to grow day in, day out. Uh, how can the young people benefit from uh, the, this particular sports center? Uh, one thing I like to speak to the young people watching me right now stop choosing what you want to do. Stop choosing what you want to do. Look at the opportunities around you and get in. That is number one. Secondly, I want to tell the young people, stop putting money first. For the last like 17, 18 years, I've been an official and executive in the, in the Kenya Taekwondo Federation. As the, uh, right now, I'm the assistant treasurer. I earn zero salary. It is just volunteer, pure volunteer. And as you volunteer out there, you make, meet people, create networks, and things open up. So the one thing I'm telling the young people, uh, don't base your ideals on money. That if you're not being paid, you know, do anything. Opportunities are there. Work is there that we choose. And because we are choosing the kind of work we want to do, it is making us to become jobless. All right. Uh, thank you very much for that particular advice. And uh, I would like to go back to Ms. Michelle. Uh, for the underprivileged in the society, mm -hmm. and they would love to to partake in these uh, training sessions and services that you people have mm -hmm. uh, for the youth, how how can they benefit? And uh, is there any program or looking into the underprivileged? Yes. Yes, we we have the the CSR uh, that we normally have every week, every Sunday. We are out in the community. Uh, we train for free for the children who are not able to come into our facility because of their their, their financial background. As we, we train for free, uh, we usually have one. Out of every 10 students that we have coming in and rolling into our school, the 11th one is a free student. So, and that child, when we are doing the, the, the free community uh, service, we are able to see that particular child, that either that child comes every every Sunday, they're there. And there's this particular thing that you can see they're very interested in. And once you train, you can see that they are very eager to, to go ahead and do it. So when we are doing the 11th child in every activity, we'll, we'll take note of that one. And then we bring them in as a free, free training. Uh, we're able to get sponsorship for education. We also go to the next level, free training, free education. And we have, um, we have quite a few. Okay, we've got, uh, so far, 10 who have already finished high school through this uh, facilitated sponsorship through Pamoja. And also, they, they're part of us because they come to train also. Yeah, so that's the way that so far we are doing with the underprivileged. Okay, yeah. let's look at the uh, couple of achievements uh, that the business has experienced for the past uh, two decades. Uh, I'll speak up from where she has said okay. uh, about education. Mm -hmm. Ours is a social enterprise. We got in there not because of making money, but making a change in the society. And the biggest achievement we have made so far is to ensure that we have facilitated sponsorship for education mm -hmm. for the E student, the D student, and the C student, and the A student, so long as we are uh, talented in sports to finish form four. That has been a major, major achievement. Uh, right now we have, out of the ten she has mentioned, we have um, two of them in the university, we have three of them in college, mm -hmm. two are self-employed as Boda Boda riders, but we are really thinking of how do we get them back into the stream to develop that talent to the next level. Uh, we have one who is now a trainer in the gym, and um, that has been the major achievement. Uh, beyond that, when it comes to talent development, our initial phase was not so much focused on the athlete. It was focused on creating jobs for the young people. For the young people. And we have created we have created, as we are talking right now, uh, approximately two to three thousand jobs 
for the young people. And uh, we have also gotten serious strategic partners whom we have worked with. Uh, we have worked very closely with uh, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, providing uh, internship to the youth. And we were able to facilitate 200 youths internship in our academy during the piloting before the program was turned over to the Ministry of uh, uh, Sports, now for the Ministry of Youth for implementation. Right now it is now being implemented. So ca going forward from uh, as soon as we are done over with COVID, we are taking more interns. Those are the major achievements. Okay. Now, of course, uh, people want to hear about money. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, zero minus two million shillings when we started off. Okay. And right now, by the time COVID was eating us, we were able to turn 300,000 per month in our account. That's good, that's yes. good, that's good. And I like the fact that it's majorly focused on talent development and also the business side, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the challenges that you guys are facing? Um, the main of challenge uh, is um, having been working with, uh, with partners, you find that the delays of payments and uh, now you have the staff, you have to upkeep them and all those kind of things. Uh, that has been the main, the main challenge that we've had to keep, to keep going even when the, the finances are being delayed by, from our partners. But otherwise it has been a wonderful <laughs> experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the feeling like when you see uh, one of your talents or people you have actually uh, mentored uh, just thrive in life? And you just, as you spoke about uh, the lady who is going to be part of the Olympics, which is now supposed to be in 2020, but 2021. Mm -hmm. What's the feeling like when you see that? Uh, the feeling of uh, seeing an athlete you have mentored is beyond explanation. Okay. Mm. It's super. I mean, I can remember when this girl, who is only three years old in Taekwondo, when she qualified in the, into the semi-final, and then there was another one also called Evelyn Alwatch, also qualified for the semi-final. We had only two players who won medals, but you could have thought. Kenya was in the number one leading country <laughs> with the kind of noise we met. Mm. We shut down Cheering Egypt, Morocco, the horse, they could not talk, mm -hmm. despite the fact that they had more medals than us. Mm. Yes, it is just okay. super. What's the vision of the Pamoja uh, uh, Sports Center? Our vision 2030 is to ensure that we have our first graduate, or rather graduates, from our own sports university we are planning to launch by 2027. Okay, right. Um, Mr. Mushire, uh, I would like to find out, are there new projects coming up as we just wind up this conversation? Yes, the, the, the main new project that we have now is that uh, the one he mentioned about okay. the arts mm -hmm. and the music. Uh, that one we didn't, we didn't have it before. We are focusing on the fitness uh, side of things. And so it's going to be exciting. Um, I, I, the the modelling side also, I have a soft spot for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that one I, I'm finding it's, it's going to sort of soften. You know, we've been too much military, <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to uh, bring a little bit of femininity and softness into the company. So I am looking forward to that. All right, I, I look at it and I'm saying like, you're just going to be of great impact on that. On that <laughs> yes. Uh, just considering of how you speak of it, it seems you're passionate about that. Uh, yeah, that yeah, I, I, it's my former <laughs> thing, yeah. So I used to do a mo I was to be a model, so that's why I'm very excited about it. Okay, and arts and Look, music. Okay, we're mm -hmm. looking forward to uh, seeing more of, uh, new projects coming up uh, from Pomoja Center, just looking at uh, talent development and uh, everything that you guys have to, over to mm -hmm. offer to the community. And how can guys find you across all social media platforms so that they can reach and uh, keep on the conversation? Okay, thank you very much. For first, I'll start with the telephone number. Uh, I wish I'd give out her telephone number, okay? And then I'll give out the social media handles, all right? Because my job as a CEO is to think, so I don't <laughs> want interruptions from thinking. Uh, all right, <laughs> okay. The telephone number is uh, 0757 462 that's 0757 462 992.
Okay. Uh, you find us on uh, our website, pamia.co.ke, pamia.co.ke, uh, uh, on YouTube. Uh, we are Pamoja, sp uh, Pamoja Sports. You find us also on Facebook, Pamoja Sports. And then uh, Twitter, we are Pamia. So Pamia, Pamoja Sports. Pamia, Pamoja Sports. Chezea tu wapo. Oh, Chezea tu wapo. wapo. Mm. Apo, sawasha songa kabisa. You guys are born Chezea tu wapo. Uh, just reach out to them. And if you have any uh, question, uh, the simple as that. Reach out to uh, social media handles and uh, get to find out more about uh, uh, Pamoja Sports Center Recreational Automata pertaining uh, leisure recreational activities that you might just get into uh, something that you love and end up making a whole business out of it. Thank you guys for creating time to be with us. We enjoyed this conversation. Mm -hmm. All right, so guys, make sure you stay tuned. Uh, follow us across all our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel at Michelle Ashira. So you can reach out to me. Make sure you don't touch that. I'll be coming up. We could be coming right back with another interview.